Nate. Yeah, What's up, Ooh, There he is. There's the man himself. Oh. What's up, Nate? How you doing, bro? Yeah. No, nah, well, not live, but so, so, so he's about to work out with Chris Avila. You already know. August 5th, we're a few days out. Nate's looking sharp. There we go. Thank you for your time, brother. I'm a sweating right now. I am. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Andrew. This is my boy right here. You disrespect him, you're disrespecting me. Inside fighting. Shout out to inside fighting. Podcast. I'm here in Los Angeles. Timothy James, our head writer, is in Brazil, and we got Andrew Capacetti in Dallas, Texas, for Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul. You're outside of the open workouts right now. What's going on, guys? Chilling. I'm here in Dallas. It's hot. It's super hot. It's like 100 degrees, like 105. We're here at the factory. Um, some fans. Of the, I already. I've already been inside. It's super packed in there. It's loud. That's why I'm out on the street. Can't really hear. And um. It's it's just what's up? It's just way too loud in there. So I stepped out here on the sidewalk, but it's packed in there. There's some breaking news. Nate Diaz was supposed to be last at open workouts. He was supposed to come on around 5:40 Central Time. He actually put on his Instagram that he will be joining his teammate Chris Avila, and they're going to do a joint uh, open workout. They're going to do it together. Uh, and, you know, as always, Nate Diaz Nate Diaz is doing stuff his way. You know what I mean? He he, he does what he wants, and he he he's the star of his own show, the star of every show. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I'm out here. Nate Diaz should be rolling up uh, at, at any moment here. Actually, how you guys doing? Nice, nice. Doing good. We're we're like inside fighting. We're kind of an inter a global staff right now. We're all over the planet. Um. Yeah. So Timmy, what's going on? How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, man. I'm excited. I'm excited for this fight, August fifth in Dallas. Nate Diaz's premiere in boxing. I feel like this is. This is what, 25 years in the making because Nate Diaz has always been training boxing. So I'm really excited to see him get out there. And I think it's dope that he's training with Chris Avila, who's going to be fighting Jeremy Stevens on that card. Yeah. It's just a very exciting time. The buzz is here. Coming off a huge Terrence Crawford Arrow Spence. Now we're all of a sudden into Diaz Paul week and social media is buzzing. And check out this buzz. Every fight Nate Diaz, because they know his team is ginormous. He always rolls with 100 guys every fight. They got this real fighting bus. I'm going to give you guys a little tour real quick. Nice. Uh, I, I guess I'll ask you while you're walking up. You were at Spence Crawford. What's like the buzz like in comparison? I mean, you were there for that fight. Crawford put bus? on a great performance. What, what's the buzz like there? Just comparing the two. Can you see the bus? Yeah, it looks great. Real fighting, good, baby. Is this a good Represent. shot of it? Yeah. So is that what the, is that what the uh, Nate Diaz teammates are rolling up onto the workouts? Yes, and all you know the this this bus sits about over a hundred people, and it's completely packed, and they're rolling all around town in this real fighting, powered by represent Team Diaz bus. Uh, let me get out of the street here, man. I love Dallas, it. Dallas is not known. I guess they're known for the heat, but it is hot out here, guys. I am not. Look, here <laughs> we go, Team Diaz. You got a nice Team Diaz. Oh, that's dope. Bus. Dope for what? That's beautiful. That's a beautiful bus. Dope. Yeah, it's a pretty cool bus, and uh, like I said, man, it's burning up out, burning up out here in Dallas. It's one of. I'm gonna, it, get, it, you, I'm gonna get you guys some live footage of yeah. uh, of, of the open workout. So I, I'm now gonna go inside the gym here at the factory. You guys go ahead and chop it up. I'm gonna put myself on mute because the music and the microphone is gonna be too loud. But you got, you know, the fans and the viewers, you guys will get some footage here on today's podcast. But. We're going to go ahead and mute the sound just because uh super loud out here. Nice. Super loud in there. Here we go. We're going to the cool. factory. You guys can see in the sky out here with the Nate Diaz shirt. That's that's awesome. How, how is Diaz army? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, you guys take it away, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead yeah. and mute myself. Now. To answer your question, Spence Crawford's buzz was insane. I would say this is just as insane or maybe a little more. The buzz in Dallas is crazy. Right? And, yeah, and yeah. Also yep. Nice. All right, let's. See. Life, All right, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Spence Crawford, Timmy, because there's obviously I I'm, I know that you watched the fight. We were texting about it a little bit. It was uh, it was pretty epic beatdown. Um, yep. This this boxing match, I mean, it's it's so unique just because of what it, this means. It's this is sort of like the. Um, I think that the first influencer boxing match took place six years ago. And like like two two days ago or something like that, and then now here we are, and now we've got Jake Paul fighting Nate Diaz. It's sort of yeah. surreal. It's like we're living this weird alternate timeline. 
But um, just uh, what did you think of that fight? Did you see the report that Errol Spence's doctor said that he was uh, compromised, by the way? Did you see that? I did not see that. Um, yeah, apparently Errol Spence is uh, or... has some like, oh, well, there we go. Wow, it's uh, it's really bumping in there. Uh, but so Errol Spence's doctor said that he's compromised in his brain from his car accident back in 2019. And then you look at what the, the beat down that Crawford put down on him. It, it makes you think a, a twice a little bit about that fight and the result. Um, just your overall take on that fight and just how, how this fight sort of like follows up that weekend in boxing. Yeah, I mean, like we said on last week's podcast, this is one of the most exciting times in boxing because we had you know, Spence versus Crawford, and now we have Paul versus Diaz. I think the hype is a little different. I would say they're probably equal, but I feel like it's a different vibe because with Spence versus Crawford, if you're a boxing purist, it was one of those fights that's like, those are the kinds of fights boxing purists want to see, right? Two undefeated guys. The going schmo. For the, How's the schmo? Yeah, there was schmo. <laughs> What's up, schmo? Uh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, making history, the first undisputed welterweight title in the four-belt era, so that you have that kind of hype. This kind of hype is totally different, right? We have one of the biggest stars in UFC history going up against Jake Paul, who's a sort of influencer who who is now making a name for himself in boxing. So I feel like it brings in a different kind of vibe, but it's a different just crowd too, a different fan base yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this one's going to bring in a lot more MMA fans. Obviously, this one's going to bring in probably a younger yeah. crowd. The, the the Jake Paul people probably he has a, a a younger following, so it's a different mix. It's a different mix up. Um, but yeah, in terms of the fight, Spence versus Crawford, obviously it was a one sided beatdown. Um, I the only thing I can say is I didn't hey think guys, it was sorry, hey, so, sorry to interrupt you guys here, but this is a Euphoria kid who uh, was recently signed by MVP right now. Javon He's Walton. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna zoom in on them for you guys, but uh, I'm gonna go back on mute here. I just want to let you know this is the Euphoria kid. Here we cool. Go. So his name is Javon Walton. He's on Euphoria. Most Valuable pro uh, Promotions just signed him, and uh, the kid's super talented. He's got fast hands. This is interesting. This is this is fun because um, you know, he is an actor, but he's an amateur boxer. He does have an amateur boxing record, and he, the kid does have potential. I'm interested to see how he looks. This is his big, his first big, uh, you know, coming out party to the masses as a boxer. Really quick, before he starts working out, just your thoughts on Errol Spence. Stephen A. Smith said he should consider retirement, you know, uh, but this was before the news came out about his brain uh, that potentially being compromised. Just overall, your thoughts on that? Well, before the, I, because I just heard about this stuff with his brain. If there's yeah. a brain injury, yes, he should absolutely consider retiring. I don't, I'm not a doctor, obviously. I haven't read yeah. the reports it sounds pretty serious. If he's compromised, if he's performing compromised, then that's something you really have to sit down and consider because boxing is very dangerous for your brain health. Obviously that goes without saying. Yeah. Right. Um, before learning that, I would have disagreed with Stephen A. Smith. I think we have to get away from this idea that if you lose, you have to retire it's in boxing. Take. Cause I think that it's a bad take because it's like yeah. that we're trying to move away from that in boxing. That also, it, give him, maybe give him a year. Ruined boxing. Yeah. And maybe give him a year to just like recover, maybe take a year off, see see where you're at in a year, see, and then get get some neurological scans, all that stuff. I think Errol Spence will be okay, but if there is something serious going on, you know, you don't want to see him. He he was talking about wanting that rematch with Crawford right away. I don't want to see that fight. I don't think he should take that fight. I think that's a dangerous fight for him. I think he needs a build back up fight before he before he gets back in there, especially if that's going on. But um I agree. yeah. So Cap, can you hear us? I don't think he can hear us because it's yeah, so right. loud in there. Yeah. But I don't know if, if you heard just, just talking about brain injuries. Vicente Luque just got cleared. He apparently had a brain hemorrhage after fighting Jeff Neal, and now he's cleared to fight. So that sounds pretty serious. Um, you know, maybe yeah. medicine has advanced so that fighters who have brain injuries can can hang in there a little bit longer. He, but is um, he fighting soon? He's fighting. Um, he, he's on a card coming up. Yeah. He's fighting. Oh my God. I was just looking at this too. Yeah. Now I'm blanking on the name, but yeah, he, yeah. he is fighting again. Um, so long as it just, just, just get it to get, take a year before you, before you fight again, if there's something serious, take a year, see where you're at. But um, I'm super excited for this. I'm just like, I guess early predictions for like, what's your sleeper pick for the weekend. We got like fights like, Damn. Alpha. 
Go ahead. I'm back out. I'm back outside. Did you guys hear me about the Euphoria kid when I was in there talking? Yeah, yep. yeah. We 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 were talking about him for a minute. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm back outside. I wanted to check in with you guys. I'll be going in and out here. When can we expect Nate? T- Timmy, you got a couple minutes here. So, um, just what like time is really it? Quick. What time is it here? One fifty-three uh, Pacific. So it's three fifty-three your time. Okay. Yeah. Nate. Nate and Chris were supposed to start their. Uh, their their uh, open workout at three forty, so they're running a little bit behind right now. I can Typical expect them to pull Nate out. Diaz, fashionably oh. late as always, you know. I think I can expect them to pull up sometime soon here. To be honest. Well, either way, let's uh let's get some quick predictions out of the way because I'm not sure if we're going to be doing parlay this week. Just fights it like there are a couple of fights on this card that i'm super excited about timmy you mentioned jeremy stevens versus chris avila i think that fight is just an absolute banger of a fight i'm super excited i think this is kind of avila's coming out party a little bit at, you know because he's he's been fighting influencers he's been the influencer uh you know uh whisperer over the over his past few fights just beating the, beating the crap out of uh you know, Dr. Mike and uh, Paul Bamba, but now he's fighting a real dog and Jeremy Stevens, a guy that actually has some, you know, wars under his belt, just went to a draw against Jose Aldo. Um, yep. you know, what, what do you guys think of that fight? What's your, uh, what's your take on it? Go for it. Yeah. Uh, I would have picked Chris Avila. Um, I, I think this is a great step up for him. Um, just, before the Jose Aldo fight, I think I would say, ah, yeah, Chris Avila's going to take that. He's going to piece him up. But I thought Jeremy Stevens looked really good, a lot better than I expected when he fight, fought Jose Aldo. So now I'm not so sure. I think it's a great step up in competition. I think it's going to be a banger of a fight. I think these are two guys who've got that dog in them. And I think it's a great opportunity for Chris to show that he's the real deal. He can hang in there with the real boxer and for jeremy stevens this is a a nice little you know nice little fight for him because you know things didn't work out that great in his ufc career but uh this is a good opportunity it's a great opportunity for both guys i'm really excited for the fight yeah i hey guys i'm rolling up on a crew here i don't know who it is it could be team jake paul it could be uh oh it looks like it's ashton silva mvp's boxer ashton silva back here in the alley Uh, okay uh, okay. anyways back, back to predictions here I do have uh, – I believe this is going to be a fantastic fight. What it, On any other card, this is a main event fight. First, Avila versus Jeremy Stevens. Nate Diaz is longtime teammate versus UFC veteran Jeremy Stevens. This is a banger. And, uh, again, if Nate Diaz wasn't headlining this card, this would be the main event. Um, I think I think size and, uh, and youth is going to play a difference here. I think Chris Avila gets it done by KO. Or TKO or, or or by decision, I think he comes away the winner. He's too big. He's a lot bigger than Jeremy Stevens. Taller, longer, better reach. He's a lot younger. You know, Chris is only thirty, so I think he has a little bit more left in the tank. They're both dogs, as you guys said. Jeremy Stevens is a dog, but Chris Avila is a Stockton dog. Um, so I got Chris Avila here. I uh, I, I agree with you, Cap. I I, I don't think it's going to end in KO. I think Jeremy Stevens the, the has the knockout power. So I think that. Uh, Avila is going to have to sort of like punch a little bit on the outside a little bit. I I like the idea of Avila by decision. I I would consider putting some money down on that simply because him and Nate are similar in that way. It's going to be a lot of volume. I mean, he was, he was just punching Paul Bamba the whole fight. Wasn't able to knock him out, but basically just immobilized him like one round into that fight where he just couldn't really do much. So if he can avoid the, the, you know, getting on the inside and getting taken a power shot from, Av- uh, from, uh, from Stevens, I think that the the volume of Avila and that style is going to, is going to really pay dividends. And over the long run of that fight, we'll see it's a, it's a big test. I think it's a 50, 50 fight for sure, but I, I am leaning towards Avila as well. Um, that being said, let's just, let's just talk about the main event here. I mean, we'll, while we have you, Timmy, Nate Diaz, Jake Paul, this is one of the this is probably the biggest fight other than fighting Conor McGregor. This is the biggest fight of certainly Jake Paul's life, but also potentially Nate Diaz's life as well. This is a uh, this, this is this is crazy. I can't believe it's actually happening. Just give me give me your two cents, guys. I'll go first on this one. This is the fight of the summer. Terrence Crawford and Spence was was insane. What a fantastic fight. And and boxing fans are lucky enough to have another great fight seven days later. But um 
I, I just think a lot of people don't know who's going to win. A lot of people are doubting Nate Diaz. Is, some people like saw a mid session online and you were doubting him. A lot of people think Jake Paul's a real good boxer because of his size and he's six and one and what he's been what he's been able to do to Tyron Willie and Ben Askren and fighting Tommy Fury, a pro boxer, to a decision. Vegas thinks uh, Jake Paul's going to win. Vegas has Jake Paul at a he is a heavy know, favorite. Heavy favorite. Nate Diaz is a three to one underdog. Um, I think that Nate Diaz has his own unique style of boxing, a Stockton style, a lot of volume, a lot of punches, aggressive, comes forward. I think it's going to be too much for Jake Paul. I think he's going to gas and he's not going to be able to defend the flurry of punches that Nate Diaz is going to, you know, unleash on him. That's the Nate Diaz style. A lot of punches, flurry, and he gets better as the fight goes on. Um, if we don't do a betting show this week, we might do one. I'm going to tell you, regardless here on the podcast, put everything you have on Nate Diaz, you'll make some money. Um, and you'll be able to make some good money. Sorry, I'm sweating here, guys, but um, there's my prediction. You're live from Dallas. <laughs> it's Nate Diaz and, and Chris Avila should be going on soon. I'm going to get you guys some footage. Check our YouTube for that. But uh, let's hear your uh, – who's next? That, my prediction is Nate Diaz by TKO. Right. Well, it's 90 degrees here in Los Angeles. So I'm guessing it's the, the, the fact, you know, I, I can imagine how hot it is there in Texas. But this is Timmy. This is uh, if we're not doing parlay, high value underdog. It could not be more uh, applicable in this situation. Um, oh, yeah. I agree with Cap. Nate's actually been boxing his whole life. He's not a professional boxer, but he's been boxing. He's been doing it his whole life. He's talked about it in a lot of his interviews recently, just talking about how him and his brother, Nick, they used to box you know, since they were, like, they were like 16 years old. They've been doing this for like over 20 years. You know, when they train for fights, they do boxing training. They have that boxing style in MMA. Is it the beautiful technique? Yep. No. Um, I think that the same rules apply for the Avila Stevens fight. It's a power puncher versus a volume puncher versus a guy that can outgas you, a guy that has the amazing cardio, who can go 10 rounds, who can legitimately last the entire fight without getting tired. You're right. Sorry to cut you off, Jesse. I, yeah. I, I got I got Nate Diaz's bodyguard here. Oh, it's Richard. Alley. It's Richard, his bodyguard. Let's get a quick prediction from Richard. Uh, quick prediction for the Nate Jake Paul fight. What's up, Richard? How many, how many rounds? No, uh, how, how do you oh, think it ends? Bro, we know how it ends. Right. How many rounds does it? Okay, how many? What's your round prediction? Oh, it doesn't matter, but I mean, I don't know. Eight. eight rounds. There you go. Two. You're the man. You're the man, Richard. I'm sorry, can't be back here. All right, guys, I'm gonna meet myself. Richard's the man. He's the he's the, Nate. Nate brought Richard on as his uh as his guy, um because people were saying that Nate needed a bodyguard. You know, because of because of because uh, of some people running up on Nate in the streets. So Richard is the guy that's there to uh, protect him. If you haven't seen it. Go check it out on our YouTube channel. It's called um, Nate Diaz's new bodyguard. It says, you know, tell people, don't run up on Nate. Go check it out on our YouTube channel. It's a great interview. Timmy. Let's let's not get this twisted. Rich is not there to protect Nate Diaz. Rich is there to protect the dudes who try to roll up on Nate Diaz. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, it's, so, it's all right. Of- I'm, picking, I'm picking Nate. It's a close okay. one. I think Nate, late round stoppage or decision, Timmy. Yeah, I like Nate as a pick. Oh, there's Nate. Podcast, real quick. What's up? Ooh, there he is. There's the man himself. Oh. What's up, Nate? How you doing, bro? No, well, not live, but so, so, so he's about to work out. Chris Avila, you already know. August fifth, we're a few days out. Nate's looking sharp. There we go. Thank you for your time, brother. I'm sweating right now. I am. Sweating. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back here to <laughs> Chris, how you feeling? Hello. About to do your open workout with Nate Diaz here. We got Nick Maximoff in the house. The whole crew. The whole crew. Bobby, Jordan Hernandez, Lucas, what up? So, Every, everybody's looking oh, sharp. Can't forget about the legendary Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz is longtime boxing coach. Oh, there, Richard Perez. What's oh, up, yeah. man? 20 years. 20 years. Love Richard Perez. So, Nate's been boxing how long? I don't know. Two He's like, 2005. We're already in 23. So you've been training for already 18 years, and he's been boxing longer than that. So I'm saying, so why why do why why does why does Vegas have him on the, as the underdog? Why are why are they, why is Vegas doubting his skills? Because I, I think because Jake Paul has got what we call a computer thing. Everybody's following him and they idle him and he's a being a talker. Right. So, Clay McGregor. So, you think it's actually speaks louder than words. That's when he gets in the ring. You think his YouTube influence is yeah. uh, playing a part in the betting odds? 
Hey, well, you're the man. You're a legend, Richard. And thank, thanks thank for all you. you've done for Nick and Nate as far as boxing. Because so their skills are some of the best now because of you. Thank you. Thank you're the man. We got Stitch Duran back there. Anyways, boys, listen. I don't. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Yeah, I'll let you guys go. Check us out. Yeah, well, Tim. Check us out. Get the dopest gear. What is it? How you guys doing, by the way? NDAboxing.com. NDAboxing.com. Let's go. How's the cappuccino? He's crazy. He's driving you guys crazy or what? Yeah, a little bit. He's a little sweaty. It's a little hot <laughs> yeah, over he's there. A, yeah, yeah. He's got the drip going on. Here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are awesome, <laughs> though, brother. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate it. Maybe he's a long time teammate. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Timmy, the workout problem. Sorry. What's your pick, Timmy? You're you're taking it away. I like Nate Diaz. I think he's gonna get that TKO in the late rounds. I think the cardio is gonna be too much for Jake. I think people are underestimating Nate's ability to box. And I also think there's a, there's one way to beat Nate Diaz in a fight, and you have to kick his legs. Jake Paul ain't gonna be able to kick his legs. Nate Diaz is gonna get that late TKO. There we go. It's a sweep. It looks like we all got an idea. It's a sweep. Hey, listen, thank you for joining us on the Fight Season Podcast. My co-host, Timmy and James, you guys are the best. Timmy, Timmy Smith. and James. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Timmy and Jesse. Timmy and Jesse. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Catch us next week and stay tuned to our YouTube channel and Instagram for more exclusive footage that you can't find anywhere else in the fight game. You know, I'm not trying to be cocky or anything, but we do get footage that no one else can get. This is facts. So, facts. And, and listen... Because of this podcast is running long, we don't have too much time. I do want to touch on Ryan Garcia linking up with Floyd Mayweather next week. We will be a week late on that, but I do want to touch it. That's a huge development. They were seeing courtside at a basketball game, but we'll touch on that on a later date. Anyways, we'll talk to you guys later. Peace out, boys. Let me tell you something about Andrew. This is my boy right here. You disrespect him, you're disrespecting me. Inside fighting. Shout out to inside fighting.